All right, so the question came up on eMastercam of how to edit toolpaths um, that go into a shape. So in this case, I've created a very, very simple example. But let's say that you were doing this with a contour toolpath at 50 inches a minute. Now, if you don't know about this, you can um, you can actually see the feed rates in the back plot window. So I'm just going to bring this up here and step through pressing the S key. And you'll see that as we're in cut here, it's 50 inches a minute all the way around. Now, whether it's an arc or a line, I'll do that. But all the way through, it's 50 inches a minute. And the question came up of how can you edit or limit that motion when you're on the inside parts while still maintaining that on the outside parts. Now, there's a couple of options that were thrown around. Uh, you can right click and go into the toolpath editor to you know, edit individual points, which is kind of annoying and bulky. But the, the big problem with this is that if you come in here and say, edit this one, and we say, edit this point and make the feed rate 25, for example, um, you have to turn it off every time you want to turn it off. So we got to go back and edit this point to 50. Okay. The other thing you're going to notice is it locks your toolpath. So even though this works at this moment, as we come into here, you'll notice my feed rate drops down to 25. Boom, boom, boom. Um, the other problem is that if we edit this toolpath at all, maybe I want to turn on depth cuts. So let me just do a, I don't know, 0.5 depth cut or something like that. Um, I have to unlock my toolpath before I can regenerate it. And as soon as I regenerate it, all of my edits are gone. So there we go. But now if we, oops, if we look at any of these, ah, stop jumping around. There we go. But you'll notice now that all of my edits are gone. The other option that came up is to do multiple chains. Um, which would work as well because if you have individual chains, you can um, edit the chain itself and edit change at using change at point. You can come over here and select and say, oh, I want this to adjust the feed rate. But again, you're running into that same issue where it's not very intelligent. And if you change it, you know, things get a little weird. So one of the other options I want to put out there is a convert to five axis toolpath which if you've never seen it before is part of the multi-axis suite. So you do have to have a license for that. I'm going to choose the same tool that I chose before. We're not going to dig into everything about it, but the long and the short of it is that uh, we're going to go toolpath to five axis. We have two different options. We can either convert to five axis, which is exactly what we're doing, just a straight conversion. You could also do a dropping, which is more of like a projection onto a surface or fitting onto a surface. So we're just going to do convert to five axis. Original toolpath is this contour. And um, there's a bunch of different options, but the long, you know, the, the basics of it are that I'm going to keep everything the same as it was. I'm going to um, link, use my links from the toolpath that I'm bringing in, and I'm going to apply new feed rates from whatever I specify in here. So it'll, if I changed this tool's feed rate, it would override the toolpath itself to that one. All right. Tool axis control. This is how you control how the tool tilts. I don't actually want the tool to tilt, so I'm just going to set that to three axis. All right, and that's going to be in the Z. Now, if this was a different plane, you'd have to choose that, of course. Collision control. I don't need any collision control. I'm just literally doing a straight conversion of the toolpath with the same exact tool. I don't want it to tilt. I don't want it to avoid. Nothing. Just leave it as, as is. But the real magic's coming in here on the feed rate control page. So... Um, what I'm going to use is a feed control zone. And what this is, is a volumetric thing. It's it, any time that the tool is inside of the volume that I specify, then do something. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to my geometry button and I'm going to choose, I know that currently at this moment, they're all white, but hopefully you noticed before that all of my vertical panels were green. So I'm going to select by color, double click. All right, so you see, I've got all of these selected. And now I'm going to puff these things up a little bit. So I'm going to say maybe 50 thou. And then if they're inside of this volume that they that they touch, I want to do a 25% feed rate. So call it 12 and a half inches per minute. All right. So now let's see what this toolpath does. So I'm going to, again, walk through. Now, one downside of this is that it, it does not 
output arcs anymore. So it is going to be a point to point toolpath. It's going to just linearize everything. But as we come around here, you can see we're at 50 inches a minute. And then as soon as we get close to this surface, it drops us down to that 12 and a half. And it will maintain that all the way through our inside shape while we're in contact and then back to 50 and then back out. Now, of course, I could have also chosen this inside wall if I wanted to keep that low, but I was mostly concerned about these, you know, inside corners, sewing that down. Now, what is this doing? Because we told it that I wanted a 50 thou, um, a 50 thou window around this thing, it's the equivalent of me saying, uh, make a, say, rectangle at 100 thou, and the width is going to be, whoops, I'm sorry, the, the height's going to be, so I know that this is one half inch. I can measure it to show you, but you can just trust me. It's a half inch. So, you know, the height would be like 0.6. Okay. And anchor to center. All right, great. So what this is really doing is creating a 3D shape in all directions by whatever amount you chose. Um, so let me just make this, you know, say green. So the idea here is that any time that this toolpath, let me just jump ahead a little bit, is touching, let's look at it from the top, this area, that tool's going to slow down. So you see out here in this area, it's not touching, so it's 50 inches a minute. And as soon as it does, it's 12 and a half. And of course, you could expand that zone out. But the other nice, the really nice thing about this is because this is a volumetric calculation, if I come in and say, adjust my depth cuts to 100 thou, obviously my toolpath has a lot more passes, but my convert to five axis will reflect that as soon as it's regenerated. So it doesn't matter which pass you're on, as long as it's touching this volume in the background, you're doing 12 and a half inches per minute as opposed to 50. So thanks for watching, hope this helps.